My name is Tyler Stoffel. This is my progress presentation on my report for Technical Writing 204 at University of Kentucky titled Earth Sheltered Greenhouses for Kentucky Growers. The purpose of this report is to examine the main concepts behind earth sheltered greenhouses and the existing data that applies to them and inform the reader on how to effectively build one. Earth sheltered greenhouses can be built basically anywhere in the world by people with very little skills. However, most of the people that are interested in them are gardeners at their houses uh, at home. And also, when building the earth sheltered greenhouse, the design parameters will change a lot based on your location. So somebody that's not in Kentucky uh, might build a lot different greenhouse than somebody in Kentucky. So for this report, the audience is homestead gardeners in Kentucky. So to look at some background, the main phenomenon that uh, is behind earth sheltered greenhouses is the geothermal effect, which says that uh, pretty much anywhere on earth, if you go five feet below the surface, uh, there's a temperature of 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Most applications make use of this with what's called an active process. As you can see in this uh, first diagram, uh, shows a binary cycle power plant. You can see that they're pumping water into the ground and then running it through a heat exchanger and then it comes up into a turbine uh, as some sort of steam or expanded fluid and then runs a generator and, and makes a workload. Earth sheltered greenhouses, however, make use of the geothermal effect passively, which means that they don't have any extra components or processes to gain the heat or cooling that they need. So when you uh, sink this structure into the ground, some of the benefits you gain are, like I said, the main effect, warming and cooling capabilities, and also weather and disaster resistance, and some uh, concealability, and some people even think that they're more aesthetically pleasing. So looking at these uh, greenhouse designs, there's two that I've found that are widely recognized that I'd like to uh, briefly cover. The first one is uh, designed by Mike Ayler. It's a basically a sunken structure that's usually made of lumber and it has special features. So you basically just build this structure above ground and you sink it down into the ground to gain a, uh, the effects of earth sheltered greenhouses, the passive effects. And then the other design that I'm looking at is called the Wallapini. It's based on um, ancient ram rammed earth techniques where this design is a lot less um, material intensive and it's more labor intensive. Uh, the bricks for the walls are all made out of earth. It's just a lot more digging and building and labor than uh, Mike Ayler's design. The work completed so far on this report is that I went ahead and narrowed down uh, the main parameters behind earth sheltered greenhouses because to make use of the benefits in them uh, it really needs to be designed with certain parameters. It needs to be designed well. And then in addition to narrowing down to these few main parameters I've been analyzing them. So the three parameters that I chose are the earth sheltered greenhouses glazing, thermal mass, and solar orientation. For the first uh, analyzed parameter is the glazing. Glazing is the greenhouse's covering material and to make it the most use of it it needs to be as transparent and heat, is, heat insulating as possible. What I found is that glass is typically a superior glazing to most of the other materials uh, like some plastics are really common like polycarbonate, polyethylene, but really the only problem with glass is that it's very heavy. Um, so in our sheltered greenhouse, one design bonus that I've discovered is that you can design it so that glass laying can be much easier because the earth sheltered greenhouse is sunk into the ground and somebody might not have to lift the glass as high when building it as compared to a traditional structure that's usually a lot higher off the ground with the roof. Then the second thing I analyze is thermal mass. Thermal mass is um, some material's ability to absorb and emit heat energy, also called specific heat capacity in chemistry. So when designing the greenhouse, you need to take advantage of thermal mass. It's very commonly done. Um, greenhouses 
generally do it with concrete, sometimes with water in the form of ponds. However, our sheltered greenhouses can take advantage of dirt as a thermal mass. Um, while dirt doesn't have the best properties as compared to water, uh, it's a fairly good thermal mass insulator and uh, emitter. So one of the concepts that Mike Ayler came up with for his greenhouse was to use thermal mass in the very back of the greenhouse in the form of dirt by stacking it up on the northern side and putting insulation over the top of it, which adds an immense amount of thermal mass uh, while not wasting that energy that could transfer out to the back, it actually transfers back into the greenhouse overnight. And the third thing I analyzed is solar orientation, which is basically just orienting the greenhouse properly with respect to the sun. The biggest thing that I found for earth sheltered greenhouses with respect to this is that they can take advantage of something called direct gain. As you can see in this diagram, um, direct gain is using the slopes and angles and overhangs of a building to take advantage of the sun. So in the summer you can design it so that when the sun is higher in the sky it reflects away or just gets absorbed in the roof whereas in the winter when the sun is lower in the sky it actually enters into the greenhouse structure and can absorb into the thermal mass a lot more effectively. The work I have remaining for this project is uh, first of all, I need to go ahead and describe a little bit more in detail about the ear-sheltered greenhouse designs that exist. Uh, mostly the two that I've found, but I think it would be of great benefit to my readers to understand what already exists so that they can take better advantage of it and know what people have already went through when building them. Also, I need to summarize my analysis and my findings and make a readable conclusion that may be in the form of some sort of recommendation. Also, um, as kind of a side note, I think I might want to relate my information a little bit more towards my Kentucky audience, making it more usable for them. Here's my references. And I was just going to uh, reach out and say that um, while this is obviously a recorded presentation, um, anybody who wants to read my report and give me any sort of feedback on more than happy to receive anything you have to say. I appreciate you taking the time to watch me. Thank you.